to dress a render out of ArchiCAD. We need to add some life into this and so we're going to add a bit of life, people and some extra objects in Photoshop. So these will be 2D elements that we're adding to a, a three-dimensional model. And let's look at some of the problems involved or associated with dressing a render scene. So first we need to have what I would call a billboard or two-dimensional additions that we're going to put into our scene. The first thing we're going to do is uh, some people. Let's find a few people. And I want one that I've already spent a bit of time cropping and cleaning up. Alright, let's do these fellas. Alright, let's scale it up. Place them in our scene. Maybe we'll put them behind the couch, which is nice. At the moment, I might need to shrink this down a bit, unfortunately, because of the resolution of the projector. A bit more. Okay. The first thing I need to do is always create a duplicate copy layer of my original drawing, and I might just hide that one. When we're creating multiple layers in Photoshop, at some point it means we need to start cutting, cropping, masking. We need to hide uh, some of the views because at the moment these guys look ridiculous because they're standing in front of the lounge or on the lounge or hovering in mid-air and we want to hide them. And so we need to determine what's the best way to do that. Do I cut out them or do I cut out uh, the background? Generally my response would be cut out the thing that's least important. You want to make sure that you don't do this prematurely because if you cut them and then want to change the scale or change where they are, then that starts to destroy the point. So let's have a quick look at how to do that. Straight away, I've got a problem, apart from cutting them, so I'll just do that really quickly so we can see what it looks like. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to reduce their opacity a bit just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom into the, the area and just using my, uh, firstly I just need to right click on their layer okay sorry I'm not doing a very good job of right clicking what I want to do is right click and say rasterize but it's not letting me, I think if I go to let's just create a new copy, that'll do the same thing Open with Photoshop. I've got too many layers in this TIFF file, so I'm just going to copy these guys on their own and paste them here, and that'll fix my problem. All right, there we go. Now we'll scale them down again. Reduce the opacity down to about half. And I'm now going to just use my marquee, just a very quick way. 
just to cut off their legs. Their legs, their legs. And so now it sort of looks like they're standing behind the chair. But the problem is, I don't really have any scale reference. Based on this space, they don't look quite right. What do I need to do to understand how big they are? I can just guess, but I'll never do a really good job. What I would recommend instead of doing that, so let's just undo their cutting their legs, because once I've cut them, I can't really edit them much more. What I'm going to do instead is go back into my view, and it needs to be, very importantly, the same view that I used to create that picture. If I start changing the view, I'm going to mess it all up. And I'm going to place some objects that can be people or some maybe columns or something in the space which is the same size as the people that I'm putting in. And by doing that, it's a scale reference. I'm not going to do a high quality render, I don't need to. I can just save it as a really cheap and nasty 3D. But at least that will allow me to have a better understanding of how big a person should be in the space. So if we go down to Site Improvements under Visualizations, and I'm just going to find some people. It doesn't really matter if it's a man or a woman. I need to remember that I need to place it on my model, 1500 below the floor. And I'm going to put someone just behind the couch. I'm also, at the same time, going to put someone in the far corner of the room. Maybe over here as well. And then someone a lot closer. Um, and let's, in this case, I might change it. And I might try to have, put someone sitting on the couch. So I'll get a woman sitting on the couch. Turn her around, and I'll have her sitting here. Oops, I have to remember to change her height. Yeah. Great. So there's my people. Let's go back to that 3D view and see what that looks like. All right. So it's, it's deliberate that I can't really see everything. Uh, and some people will be hiding and that's sort of the point. But it's going to give us a great scale identification. File. Save as. I'm just going to export it straight from here as an image file. Uh, the one I want to use is a TIFF just to keep the quality as high as possible. And I'll call this one scale ref. Now back into Photoshop. I'm going to take that scale reference and place it over the top of my high quality file. I need to just increase the size and obviously I want to match it with the other one as much as possible. And now if I reduce the opacity of this, we can see that the model is the same incrementally, which is great. That's what we wanted. It's exactly the same model. It's got the same information in the same place. We've just got some extra information now. So what I'll do is just switch the layers, the order of these layers around. So I'm going to scale, sorry, I'm going to drag my scale reference layer just below my, my men. And I'm going to turn the opacity of that one right up. So I can now see exactly what's happening. I'm going to take the opacity of the, these guys and put them right up. And now I need to try to use this person, understanding his scale, to try to determine how big these people should be. So it wasn't too bad, but he's quite close. I want to probably have them a little bit further back. So obviously looking at headline, uh, the, the line or the height of people's heads, I want to reduce their scale a bit. I hold shift to make sure it's restrained. And now I'll zoom right in, turn off my reference for now, reduce the opacity of the men again, and I'll now again crop them to my scene
And if I don't want to uh, destroy it, what I might just do is go layer, new, layer by cut, rather than delete. Let me rename you, please. Wow, I can't do a lot of things at the moment. I don't know why that I normally could. And now I've got those there. I can even lock them together if I want to. So if I then need to move them later or change the scale, that all happen together and I can undo. But now I'm much more happy that my men in my scene are to scale. <coughs> So that's the, the first part. Let's just have a look at those pretty lights that you all like to look of. Document, architecture, billboards, light fixtures. Let's have a look at this whole big one here because there's a lot of different things. And the best thing is it's all a white background so it's really easy to remove. Now so how do we do that? We've looked at cropping and cutting images before. Um, having a white background is a fantastic place to start. So if I use my magic wand, then I can very commonly... I need to rasterize this, but it's not giving me the option. Can you remind me where that is, layer? What does rasterize layer mean? Rasterize, there it is. It, it means when it brings it in, it brings it in as a smart object, uh, like in Illustrator. Uh, so it reduces the file size. It means that we can't edit it, um, edit it completely. But it just if, if we're not going to edit it, it makes it better. When we need to start edi editing it, we need to rasterize it, which means turn it into pixels, individual pixels that can be edited. Let's just have a look at some options. So I just tried a magic wand, but you, we see that it didn't work really nicely because it left me with all these white edges around it. That's to do with the tolerance. So let's undo that. I need to try to re or increase the size of the tolerance enough that I don't have any white left. So let's increase the tolerance to 20 and try deleting again. See that I've got less white but I've still got some. So that's better. And if I wanted to do it perfectly, I would do in each one individually because at the moment, doing them all, I'm, I'm cutting things out that I don't really want to be cutting out. But that'll do for now just for the, the purpose of what I'm trying to explain. Let's use this light here. So I'm just going to select this and cut this onto a new layer. Layer, new, layer via copy. And I'll turn that other one off. So I need to fit this light into the space and it, it's actually going to work really, really well for me in this case and I'm not going to have to do too much extra work. The more I make things hide, the better it looks and the more easily I can convince you that it's real. And so here I have the benefit that I have all these beams and so by cutting this to make it look like it's hiding behind the beam, you don't really know where it's mounted, how it's sitting, but it, it tends to look like it fits in the space more. And that works, and it's sort of coincidental that that works. Let's just grab another one and, and see maybe why this one works, but this one won't. So normally I can just right click here and it will give me the ability to rasterize. At the moment my computer's not doing that, and it may be because I've got it plugged into. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, 
I'll just do this. And where did you increase the cost? Oh, just on the top one. Yeah. I'm just going to do this slightly better this time. I'm just using the um, erase tool because I don't want to get rid of the white reflection in the middle of the lamp. Yeah. And so that, what I'm doing is I've, I've made a selection using my marquee, but now I'm using the erase tool just to delete it, which means that I'm focusing on the area that I want to delete and not deleting everything else accidentally. All right, that's a bit cleaner. So really, like I was saying, that's what I should have done on the last one except with the last one, um, because I was doing so many, it was a bit tricky. Okay, so let's just scale this down. And apart from the obvious material differences, what is the difference between these two lamps? What else? Nope. Nope. Oh, the tilt. The tilt, yes, yes. So remember, we're, we're viewing a three-dimensional object. And so what does this suggest? This suggests that it's actually based on perspective, let's say one or two-point perspective, where below the line of the lip of this light, which means, if we're understanding perspective, that means it's above our head. And normally speaking, that's what it should be. Whereas when we look at this lamp... We can't see the underside of the light, which means that we're actually above it. So it doesn't actually work then. Okay. It looks silly. It looks fake. It looks wrong. So let's turn off the other lamp. What would we have to do for this to make it look realistic? In truth, we'd have to make it lower than we need it to be. So down here, that might actually be in the right place, except that's a bit silly. Or we, we're going to have to try to fake to try to get that effect. So let's just have a look at how we might go about faking to get that effect. So I'm going to get a little bit tricky and hopefully it will work. So let's just do the same thing first. We're going to chop off the top to make it look like it's hiding. And that looks good, but down here is not quite working. We need to... Hmm? Close, close. So let's just copy this area and look at some ways that we can do that. We're going to always create a, a duplicate layer of I copy. And I didn't want a whole large area, I just wanted a small area, and then I'll edit this even more. Now, if I take this particular one and I can mirror it, flip horizontally. Uh, wrong way around, sorry. Transform. Oh, I've just got this, I just realized um, I've got a, an extra line here that I don't want, which is the bottom of the drawing. So I'm just going to get rid of that first. That little white line. Again, why am I getting it rid of it now before I duplicate the layer so I'm not duplicating errors? Layer new, I'll do it this way, sorry. Create a copy, layer new, layer by copy. And just so I don't confuse myself, I'll just rotate it this time. So what am I doing? By creating a, a mirrored copy or a rotated copy, in effect, I'm understanding what this would look like if it was actually flipped around the other way. So let's get rid of all the extra information because I just want to keep that lip. I want to keep the rim. I don't want to keep everything else at the moment. Delete. And now let's drag this up. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's sort of cheating just maybe a little bit. But we can we can do some other things to make it work perhaps just a little bit better. So what I might do, um, let's just grab my. It's sort of it blows your mind how easy it is, isn't it? So let's just pick up. Let's pick up uh, a bit of this part here, and I'm just going to change just that background, just to make that a bit duller, so it doesn't have that reflection. But now I'm going to 
increase the brightness of that whole area inside. Uh, sorry, let's do that again. I need to define the area that I'm talking about. So when you create a light through Photoshop, is it hard to get the lighting right for the Hmm, a little bit. It, it depends how how clever you are. Um, and I don't mean clever as in smart, I mean like tricky of to sneaky, yeah, about how you position your lights and everything like that. It's two parts. It's making the light fixture look right and it's making the space look like it's illuminated. And we usually do that in two different ways. So we get the model right in ArchiCAD or like I'm doing here, adding in an object in Photoshop. But the lighting, we can do it in Photoshop, and I'll show you how to do that a bit later, but it's best if we try to do that in Atlantis or in ArchiCAD. Okay, so image adjustments, and I want to use, uh, let's use brightness first. Oh, you sneaky, sneaky. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, that's crazy. And now it looks like I've got a light. <laughs> so see the difference? Yeah. It didn't take a lot of work, but now it looks like it's above us. So that's the first shoe trick. I've been going on for too long already.